Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review and today's game up on the tabletop is Sushi Boat by Jap Anime Games. This is a game that plays 2-5 to five players, is 30-60 to 60 minutes to play, and is for ages 8 and up. And in the game Sushi Boat, you are going to go to a restaurant and eat at a sushi boat. A sushi boat is a place where it's like a turnstile where you're going to be selecting plates of sushi to eat and that's what you're going to do. Everybody's going to eat sushi. On your turn, you're going to take your patron, select a space in which you'd like to eat some sushi, take an action, and then eat the sushi. You'll be stacking plates, trying to make combinations of colors and different types of sushi to score at the end of the game, and the game ends when the deck runs out. Along the way, there are going to be wasabi challenges. When they pop up, you'll have to guess what two hidden sushis remain behind the boat here. If you can do that, you'll gain wasabi, which will score you points at the end of the game. Add secret objectives to give you an even more interesting scoring aspect to the game, and whoever has the most is the winner. Let's talk about setup, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin setup for the game Sushi Boat, the first thing that you do is you take the boat and you place it within reach of all players. This is the main game board, it's the wooden boat. From there, you're then going to go ahead and take the little tiles here, represent actions, and place one of them in each of the four slots below, which is where the circles are, and one right in the middle. Then, go ahead and take all the plates, the sushi plates. They're going to be represented by blue, yellow, green, etc, etc colors, and shuffle them up into this bag here, and place a number of them out so that it fills the entire boat, including the secret spaces, minusing the green and red slot. Then, each player is going to get a player board. The player board is going to also come with a pawn of their color, two money, and two secret objective cards, which players will pick and uh, select one of them to begin the game. The rest is going to be the decks of playing cards. This is going to be a deck that you're going to organize based on how you're going to be play, playing it out with the wasabi challenges, as well as the additional menus, which are also optional. You don't have to play with them if you do not want to. Also, take the wasabi and the plate and place them in, and the little plate along with the money and place that in within reach of all players. The last thing that you do is you give each player a player reference, which you'll be using to dictate the turns of the game, and then set aside the scoring for later. Alright, that's how you set up, let's talk about how to play. Playing the game is very simple. The first player is the one who's going to start, and you can select any way you would like, and you have to also make sure that everybody has selected one of the secret objectives and put the rest back. And you're just going to go through the turn order reference card here. The first thing you'll do is reveal a plate from the Sushi Boat deck. You will take the top card, reveal it, and check the top right hand side. There are two options that this can be. It can either be a red trash can or a green arrow. If the card is a red trash can, what you're going to do is you're going to take plates from this bag here and place them and push them onto the conveyor belt up until one plate hits the red trash can. The moment any plate ever hits a red trash can for any reason here, you're going to discard that and put them in a stack as the discarded plate stack. So in this case here, if I were to have one less plate, I would actually, in the trash can sense, put one from the bag and push it, and then the board is now filled, I have to do it one more time, thusly pushing one of these plates into the trash can, and then you're going to form the stack, which is the discard pile. The other option is the uh, green arrow. The green arrow is similar to the trash can, but instead of pushing up until a plate gets discarded, you're going to pull from the bag, and you are going to push up until the board gets filled, changing the game ever so slightly in how cards are going to be, or plates are going to be added to a discard pile or added to the board here. The last card that you can pull is a special card, and it's called the Wasabi Challenge card. When you pull the Wasabi Challenge card, Basically what is going to happen is all players are going to play a little mini memory game. Each player is going to get, get two wasabi tokens. You'll take them from this plate here and then you will secretly place them on any of the five colors that exist in the game that you believe are these two hidden plates. If they are two of the same color, you can simply stack them, but just make sure that nobody can see your options. So in this case here, I can place it on a blue and a red, that's my guess, and I can hide it. One, two, three, we all reveal. When you reveal, the player whose turn it is will take plates and push them up until the two hidden plates are revealed and available on the board here. So in this case here, it looks like it is going to be a white and a blue. When you have the two revealed uh, on the board, you are now going to check to see how well you did. I played a red and a blue, and it was a white and a blue. So I will only gain one of these cubes and place it in my wasabi pool, which will score me a victory point at the end of the game.
From there, the player who drew the card and played it over is now going to take their turn. And you will take your pawn from your player board and place it on one of the many spaces represented by the same uh, icon as your pawn's base and place it there. There are two reasons why you do this. A, because you're going to eat the plate that you are adjacent to at the end of your turn, and B, because maybe you want to play the ability that is adjacent to your pawn as your bonus action or as your action for the turn. There are three actions you can now take after you place your pawn, but you can only choose one of them. The first one is that you can visit the staff space on your adjacency. So for instance, placing this guy here, I can choose to use Neko, which will let me take a plate, tr plate from the trash can for one yen. Or maybe I did Hiroshi, which would let me take a plate from the direct opposite side of the board for one yen. Basically any of these abilities you'd like to take will cost you a single yen that you can spend, um, and that will count as your one action for the turn. If you don't want to take the bonus action, then you can instead buy the top dish from the discard pile. This is a little confusing, but the top dish is not this here, this is a plate, but these are the dishes, and you can buy the card's ability. In this case here, I could spend one of my yen to purchase this card. This card is going to have an effect that you can play on your turn, and in addition, at the end of the game, you will score points for having played cards like this. Look at the plates in your stack and draw the top side dish from the discard pile. So there are multiple different aspects uh, to the cards here as you flip them over, and they're kind of like a twofold. One, it dictates how the board is going to be filled, and the other is that you can purchase these cards for their ability and play them, which will let you score points and gain their ability throughout the game. The last action that you can take is take a yen from the bank. You can take simply one money, thusly refilling your stash, and thusly ending your action. If you're playing with these secret objective cards, these guys here, you can actually draw two of these guys and pick one of them to try and gain more points at the end of the game. So those are the three, plus the bonus action if you're playing with the additional variant. From there, you're then going to do the last thing. You will eat your sushi. To eat your sushi, you simply look at the plate that is adjacent to the pawn that you placed. You take that plate and place it on your sushi boat space in the middle of your player board. And then you're going to pass. The next player will then flip over their card, check to see what the top right symbol is, place plates until you follow along with what it is, whether it be the trash can or whether it be the arrow. And of course, if it's a wasabi, you do the challenge, and then that player will go, placing their pawn down on one of the spaces, taking one of the three actions, maybe they just he or she just wants a yen, and then eating as well. And the game will progress like this, up until the last card of this deck has been flipped over. And that will end the game. Whoever has the most points is the winner, and there are a variety of ways to score. The first way you'll score in this game is having the same color plates stacked on top of each other. If you have three red plates stacked on top of each other, it will be three minus one. So each of them is always going to be minus one. So if I have three red and then three blue, it will be three minus one and three minus one, which will give me four points. The only unique uh, difference between these is that the white ones are considered wild and you do not lose uh, your, your, your bonus. So if I have three red and a white and another red, it would actually be four red. So you don't lose the, the, you don't color break with white, but otherwise any other color you do. So you always wanna try and stack as many of the same colors you can. But also, the next thing of scoring is you want to uh, score for each unique sushi that you have in your stack. And there's a little bit of memory involved with this as well. And there are a number of sushi, there are three, six, seven different sushis that you're gonna be seeing on the board here. And you want to stack them as well, trying to not get any repeats because you will get additional points for each unique one that you have. Having three unique ones will score you one point, and then it goes to two points, four, seven, and nine points for having all seven. Uh, the last way you're going to be scoring uh, points, uh, other than just gaining points for your wasabi, is going to be, or like uh, your three main ways, the last of the three is going to be to score points for having the most played cards. You'll get five points if you have the most, and two points for having second most. The two bonus ways to score are additional, uh, po additional points for every wasabi cube that you have in your little wasabi area for your wasabi challenge, and if you're playing with these sushi boat menu pairing points, this will also score you additional points. This one says you want four or more green plates and four or more yellow plates, which will give you four points, which kind of make you color break on purpose. 
Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner of Sushi Boat. Okay, so a few caveats. Caveat one is that you have the scoring board and this is what you're going to utilize at the end of the game to score you points. You'll say, okay, I have four reds in a row. That's gonna score me three points. Then I happen to have five different sushis, which is going to score me four more, going to seven. Then I happen to have the most cards, which will score me five more. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm at 12. I have one of the wasabis. I'm not a great person at memory, so I'll go to 13. And then finally, I did not complete my boat, so I gained zero. Or if I did, then I would gain an additional six, and that would be my final score. This is a low scoring game. You're not gonna get past 30 points in this game, unless you're really, really, really good. Um, but either way, whoever has the most is the end. You'll use this little board here, and you'll actually use your pawn as well. Also, you can't place on a spot that somebody has already placed at. You can only place on the four plus spaces on the game board if there are four or more players uh, playing the game. And whenever there's a wasabi challenge and you push plates on, you have to make sure that not only that you see the plates, but they, the plates that are hidden will go into the two right-hand side spaces that can be taken. So that they are not only visible, but also available. And that's pretty much it. So this is a memory game and this is a little bit of a management game. You need to collect as many unique types of sushi as possible, and remember the previous ones that you collected, no writing things down. You need to gather the exact same color plates, unless you're rocking the bonus variant of the game, in which case you'll want to follow along with this here, um, because you'll score additional points for having stacked the same type of colors. Utilizing white can benefit you by scoring additional points and also giving you the unique, unique types of sushi, because while this doesn't hurt you in the color breaks, it can still give you the bonus for having unique types of sushi in the game. Um, there are also these additional little cool abilities that not only are there multiples of them, and in some cases, if you're, if you're rocking certain abilities, you can swap them out with other unique ones uh, from the game box. But they all do different things and they can help you in different ways, whether it be giving you wasabi, whether it be taking the different plates on the opposite side of the board, exchanging them, uh, taking a plate from an adjacent space as opposed to just the space that you're on. So placing them on the ability might be more important to get the plate that you need um, because you get to take the action first with these guys, which then will let you stack. So you can kind of coordinate on your turn plates that you want. Also, remember too that because the cards are random as to what plates are going to be removed and when they won't be, you have to kind of prepare for that and have multiple different slots that you'd like to be able to place on. Now, with more players comes less spaces, and even with uh, in a four-player game, you're only going to have a limited number of spaces available to you for the type of cards or boats, or not boats, the type of uh, plates that you're going to want when you place them down. So you have to be kind of cognizant as to this is a space I want. If I can't get there, how do I get there? Can I utilize one of these cards here, giving me the ability to score the plate that I need? Is it an ability I need? Or can I just simply place, gain what I want and take a money and save it for another period in time in which, while it might not be the most, like the most the best possible move available to me, it's at least not gonna hurt me. And then when it comes down to it, when I'm down to really bad options, I have that money available and I can then utilize it for an ability that will save me, scoring me additional points at the end of the game. Because this game can come down to you fulfilling one, one, one objective or not fulfilling that objective. Uh, the memory aspect of the game is a lot of fun. I'm not a great, I'm not really great at memory type of games. Remembering what plates are here, I have to consistently remember, okay, these are the next two that are going in here. At what point in time um, is the sushi bo is the wasabi challenge going to come out? I'm not sure. I can kind of gauge it though, based on where it's where they're kind of placed in the deck and they're kind of spread out. It's been a while, so now I need to keep track of this board here and make sure that I don't goof because these, while only being a point each two, four, six, and eight points for having all the challenges is actually more than a basic menu card, which is six. And remember, the 30 card point, the 30 points on this board states it's a, it's a low scoring game. So having as many points as you possibly can can get you right over the hump of another player. So memory does play a huge aspect to this game. Color, variation, and even hoarding of resources and using them when you need to, or the cards as well, because there's a variety of cards in the game, like remove all pawns from the board and take again. So that kind of opens up your available spaces because you saved, then you were able to spend for this card that you needed. And at the round which you needed a spot somebody else was on, now you can play this card here. Uh, Tempura chooses a plate, push it forward one space, and then take again. Look at all the plates in the stack of your stack so you can remember what so sometimes you can like break that memory aspect of the game with plates and then uh take the top side dish dish card card so you kind of get an extra bonus card in addition to this one here and remember playing cards in the game scores you points as well so you can go the route of making sure that you score an extra 
free five points by playing the most cards. Sometimes a card is just going to give you straight up one point, which is also useful because then you get one objective along with just basic scoring, which is important as well. I personally prefer playing with the menu because it offers you more variation, it allows you to score additional points in the game, but it's not necessary. And for your first game, you don't need to play it. There's quite enough variation and option uh, already as there is in this game. It is a lighter game, it is a family game, and it is a memory game, but there is a lot of strategy and choice and trying to kind of plan ahead that I think a lot of Euro players are going to like this game, family gamers and memory gamers, puzzle gamers are going to have a good time with Sushi Boat. Another thing to talk about is the quality of the game. This is top-notch quality, one of my favorite looking board games I have seen in quite a while when it comes to these family type games. Um, the beautiful wood board with the wonderful hidden aspect. Everything feels great. Pushing these is so tactile and wonderful. Uh, having these stacked up here, it looks good. The sushi looks great. The quality of everything is wonderful. It feels like I am playing a sushi game. I'm at a sushi restaurant and I'm trying to eat as much sushi as possible. If you are a fan of this theme and you like this style of game, this is a no-brainer, an easy pickup. I don't know the prices, so that might be like the one other little considering factor that you might have looked into because it is so good. I'm imagining it's fairly expensive, but there is no drop-off in quality. Even the cards are very nice quality. So you're gonna get a really, really wonderful looking game, high quality, and it was a lot of fun. Played this multiple times, enjoyed it each and every time with a bunch of different play groups. I think you guys are going to love the game Sushi Boat. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sushi Boat by Jap Anime Games. If you're interested in picking it up, there's a link down below in the description where you can get your own copy. You can also check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can see us play games literally just like this one here. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Hit that subscribe button, like button, notification button. It does greatly help. We do greatly appreciate it. And as always, I look forward to joining you on the Sushi Boat next time.